Growing up, we were German. We danced in a German dance group. I wore lederhosen. For some reason, Americans always associate dinky leather shorts with German men's folk clothing. It just tends to irk me at times, not merely because of the impracticality of these garments in a historical sense, but rather due to geographical and social norms. You see, what we nowadays associate with German folk clothing originated in the Kingdom of Bavaria in Germany's southeast. We must remember, though, that Germany is a fairly large country, roughly the size of the U.S. state of Montana, and it did not exist as a united entity until after 1871. Before that time, the land we now know as Germany was divided into several kingdoms, principalities, duchies, counties, and city-states, united primarily just by language. Politically, many states were divided based on religion. Northerners were mostly Protestant, while Southerners were mostly Catholic. Weather in the North could be pretty unforgiving, while the South had a more pleasant climate. Southerners took to farming and the timber trade, while many Northerners made their living on the rivers and seas. Several of these factors went into shaping what the German people wore. But to put it into context, you wouldn't expect a Minnesota fisherman to be dressed as a Texas cowboy, or a southwestern Pueblo native to dress like a Great Lakes Ojibwe native. The point is, every region of Germany has its own particular costume, and in this video we will go over some of the highlights of each region. As a note, most of the folk clothing, or Tracht, came about during the Romantic Age, when people across Europe began to take notice of local traditions. The Romantics looked at the past clothing and clothing of the peasantry to form an idea of national identity. To start off, we'll take a look at the South, the Catholic states, known for their agriculture and forestry industries. Bavaria is the Catholic heartland of Germany, but it's still allied with the Protestant Prussia during the formation of the German Reich. After World War II, American soldiers were stationed in Bavaria to guard against East Germany, and very soon, Bavarian traditions became almost synonymous with other German traditions around the world. The men here, of course, were known for wearing uh, lederhosen, or leather breeches. These breeches were typically made of deer leather and were durable, rugged and perfect for working in the Bavarian hills. So durable were they that oftentimes pairs of lederhosen were handed down from generation to generation. The lederhosen were held up with leather suspenders joined at the front with a decorative yoke, and over top would be worn a waistcoat or short jacket. For a long time people associated lederhosen with being uncultured or uneducated. However, that soon changed when King Ludwig II of Bavaria became well known for wearing lederhosen while hunting, and pretty soon, the Austrian royal family began to wear them. Of course, there were still variations in clothing across Bavaria. Northern Franconian men were known for wearing tricorn hats, while the southern Miesbachers wore the Tyrolean hat. Additionally, Miesbachers would wear shorter lederhosen than the men who lived in Franconia. The region of Baden-Württemberg is home to the expansive Black Forest, a land full of beautiful woodworking and Catholic traditions. Men here usually wore short-crowned, wide-brimmed hats, along with frock coats and waistcoats, similar to what they might have worn in the rest of Central and Northern Germany, including a pair of long trousers, as seen in these colorized photographs. While working, the men would probably wear traditional lederhosen, similar to what the Bavarians would have worn. Next up is Middle Germany, a mixture of Catholic and Protestant regions with an equally rich history of clothing. Historically, one of the largest industries in Saxony was mining, dating all the way back to the Bronze Age. The men who mined these mountains belonged to various guilds and associations, and their work clothes and ceremonial clothes were represented in guilds and associations. At this parade scene in Marienburg, you see the local men and boys dressed in minor ceremonial clothing. They're wearing tall crowned caps, military-style tunics, and leather gaiters and knee pads to protect their legs. Thuringia used to be a collective of numerous small city-states smack dab in the center of Germany. 
and it was known for its dense forests and farms. Costumes here were influenced somewhat by local Slavic populations, although the majority of the population were Protestant. Men in Altenburg wore these small silk felt hats, while these men near Jena wore wide-brimmed tall crown hats. This wealthy farmer from northwest Thuringia wears a long coat and his hat brim is held in place by ribbons, and this farm boy wears a fur cap and short jacket. Hesse, much like Thuringia, was also once a collective of small city-states watered by the rivers Rhine and Main. Many of the rulers there, not wanting their peasant farmers to land in debt due to overly elaborate clothing, forced a strict dress code to follow. Farmers in the Hinterland wore smocks, the black set of clothes for Sundays and special occasions. Men in Schwalm had waistcoat decorations, dependent on their age and role in the family. Men in the Rhone, meanwhile, had a bit more freedom with their choice of clothing, whether long coats and wide-brimmed hats, or short jackets with fur caps. The North Rhine is a historically rich region, with fertile farmland and a fair bit of revenue made from ferrying traffic down the Rhine River. The men here commonly wore a pointed cap, very similar to what we nowadays would consider a nightcap although there were still other working men who wore peak caps, like this group from Ellsdorf. Westphalia, meanwhile, came under the arm of Napoleon during the early 19th century, and as such saw fashion evolve with the styles of France. This Osnabrucker, gentleman's Sunday best, consists of long trousers and coat stemming out from French revolutionary fashion, while this farmer from Minden wears a long white frock coat similar to what we will see in Lower Saxon fashion. The Rhineland Palatinate sits directly south of North Rhine-Westphalia and came under the control of the Kingdom of Bavaria after Napoleon's first abdication in 1814. While some men maintained local traditional clothing well into the 19th century, others adopted more Bavarian fashions like lederhosen. This farmer from Koblenz is dressed in a knee-length coat with woolen breeches, while these two working men wear the usual work clothing, a smock, trousers, and brimmed hat, or a short jacket, breeches, and pointed cap. Saarland is located across the German border from the long-disputed region of Elsass-Lorraine. The traditions here are a mixture of German and French, including the clothing. Also, the Saarland became a center of the German tailoring empire and became even more profitable with the invention of the sewing machine in the 1840s. This sketch shows mid-19th century Saarlanders in a variety of clothing, from the cocked hat, frock coat, and leather knee breeches, to shorter jackets and gaitered overalls. Now last, but not least, we finish on northern Germany a region long shaped by centuries of Protestantism and Prussian monarchy. Historically, the state of Brandenburg was ruled over by the Kingdom of Prussia, which maintained one of the world's finest militaries. Service in the Prussian military was mandatory for all able-bodied young men and boys, be it either the regular army or the militia. This military heritage is reflected in the menswear of the region, as a common garment was a long blue overcoat with red lining. The coat would vary from person to person. A wealthier individual could afford an ankle-length coat with two rows of buttons, while a poorer man would have to settle for a knee-length coat instead. Underneath, they wore common staples of German folk clothing, knee breeches, and either a single or double-breasted collared waistcoat. The region of Mecklenburg-West Pomerania historically changed hands several times between the Poles, the Swedes, and the Prussians. Clothing here reflected occupation. Farmers would typically wear knee breeches and waistcoat, while sailors and fishermen would wear slops, a short jacket and cap, seen here on the island of Rügen. 
There's not too much to note about men's folk costumes in Schleswig-Holstein, since the women of the region have more authentic costumes than the men, who mostly copy the styles of other North German regions. However, there are a few hallmarks that sneak through. For example, the region of Dithmarsh incorporates the Tsaka, a double-edged short sword, into its folk costume and dances. Hamburg is one of many strange areas in Germany where, along with Berlin and Bremen, it's considered a free city. Hamburg was and still remains a major shipping port, and so people of the city typically wore what was popular in Western fashion at the time. However, the Fierlanta, a group of islands on the Elbe River in the southeast of the city, maintained their own style of folk clothing. Men would wear tall crowned hats, brown jackets, waistcoat, and knee breeches. The coat and breeches were festooned with silver buttons and could be made of either leather or corduroy, depending on wealth and line of work. Like Hamburg, Bremen was considered a free city and at one point occupied much of the land surrounding the Weser River. The costume, though, can be considered typical North German, short jacket, waistcoat, knee breeches. Rural farmers, though, would wear a pointed cap while in the house, very similar to a nightcap. In the fields, though, a wide-brimmed hat would keep the sun off your face and the rain from dripping down your neck. Historically, Lower Saxony consisted of several different duchies, counties, and principalities, so every region has its own take on folk costume. However, the most ubiquitous article of clothing came from Brunswick a long white coat with red lining, very similar in style to the Brandenburg coat mentioned earlier. The waistcoats commonly buttoned underneath the left armhole instead of the front center, and to top off everything was the tricorn hat. French writer Stendhal in his impressions from northern Germany reported all the clothing to be strictly cut, never overly pretentious or ridiculous. And German writer Heinrich Laube wrote in his travel novels that in the summer, the working men would wear canvas smocks over their black underclothes. And to round out the list, saxony anhalt which is somewhat of a mashup of territory from the former Kingdom of Saxony and the Duchy of Magdeburg, along with a number of microstates known for dotting the whole of Germany. Historically, men in Magdeburg would dress very similarly to their Brunswick counterparts with the double-breasted waistcoat and light leather knee breeches. The coat, however, as seen in this print, was black with blue lining. So, those are some of the men's folk costumes from around Germany. Did I leave out any particular costume? Did I get my information completely and utterly wrong? Well, feel free to leave a comment below, because I really love to learn about men's German folk costumes. Anyways, what I'm wearing today is considered typical North German fashion with a short jacket, waistcoat, a red and gold striped cravat, and black stockings with brown canvas knee breeches. But thank you for everyone for watching, and maybe sometime in the future I'll do more videos like these. Till next time, I'm Captain Rutledge, and good day.